um, my concern is, of course, you know, in Egypt, Egypt was a, a fairly moderate government as far as uh, the Arab world goes, and uh, uh, with their elections, they've brought in about 40% Muslim Brotherhood in their parliamentary elections, about 20-some uh, plus of the Salafists, and that's a fairly frightening coalition. And um, I, I suppose the, the, the question then should, should be asked, what are we doing and what more can we do to ensure that you know, Syrian Kurds, uh, Christians, uh, uh, any of the Jewish population, other minorities there are fully protected and will have meaningful roles in building a, a, at least a religiously and ethnically tolerant uh, democratic Syria should the Assad re regime you know, be eventually overthrown. Uh, you know, we, we tried to do that in, in, in Iraq. Many of us were quite concerned about religious freedom there. That was not achieved, and there's a terrible purging, especially of the Christian population in, in Iraq now, and it's a, it's a frightening thing, I think, to a lot of us. What can we do to try to prevent that uh, dynamic from occurring in Syria in a post-Assad reg uh, regime? And I direct that to either, either of you. I, you know... Uh Things you've pointed out are, are, are truly legitimate concerns, um, and you know I, I guess I guess the response is that you know if if we can build uh, democratic institutions uh, into these countries, and and to some extent we're, we even see it we see it in Iraq, uh, you know we're beginning to see it uh, in Egypt. Uh, we certainly see it in Libya. Which is that you know once you build some of these institutions where uh, parties have to participate in governing uh, and they have to look at how they can build coalitions mm. uh, and try to uh, to meet their responsibilities to the people that uh, you know whether whether they like it or not it does have uh, some kind of moderating impact uh, even in Egypt where you know I, I understand your concerns the fact is that uh, the Brotherhood. Uh, yeah, there are various segments of the Brotherhood. Some are, are now trying to understand that they're going to have a bigger responsibility there. They're going to have to exercise, uh, you know, uh, leadership with regards to uh, every aspect of governing there. Uh, and uh, we, we, in, in Iraq, every time uh, it looks like it's headed towards one direction, the fact is that uh, the Kurds and others that are part of that government continue to bring pressure on the president to try to stay in the right path mm. doesn't doesn't always work as as crisply as as we would like but the fact is it does impact on that we're seeing some of that in libya you know it, there are a lot of forces as a result of the arab spring we've unleashed a lot of forces here but one thing that i don't i don't think we ought to lose sight of is that as a result of all of this we can direct and help direct uh, those countries in a better direction than where they were. Mr. Secretary, we if I could try to, to squeeze that. in just one last, because sure. you're, you're on the right track here, and I, I guess I'm hoping that we might be able to uh, involve some of the religious and ethnic minorities, at least in southern uh, Syria, right. I'm sorry, northern Syria, because it seems to me if we do that ahead of time, we have a chance of, of ameliorating the, the issue, and, and of course we should probably be pretty thankful to Israel for taking out the, the nuclear plant at this point if, <laughs> if the Muslim Brotherhood does gain control of Syria. With that, uh, uh, anything, any of the thoughts you have? No, I, I, I agree with what you just said. Thank you.